Hello and welcome to the Guna Tour. Back in with you guys for another show, for another episode of our Raw Reaction series. It's of course a show in which we react to the latest Arsenal news, matches, transfers, speculation, everything. Um, and get your thoughts. Um, effectively, what I wanted today to be was just sort of a roundup. But first, uh, I need to apologise. I need to apologise because last two days you haven't really got any Guna Tour content. I can only apologise. Uh, I did put a tweet out the other day saying that it has been mega busy at work i've had mocks come in for those that don't know mocks are like practice assessments before the real gcses at the end of the year um and that has taken up a hell of a lot of my time um and obviously which has meant i can't produce as much for you guys but i hope you've enjoyed what began at the start of the week the managerial tactical breakdown series in which we talked to john driscoll um about lewis enrique and had thoughts of him joining arsenal and we also talked um, to Tom Midler from the other Bundesliga podcast uh, about Marco Rosa, which if you watched it, you realise that I mispronounced Marco Rosa's name about 50 times. They called him Marco Rose, like a typical Englishman that I am, did that. Um, but uh, but yeah, I hope you really enjoyed those. There are more in the pipeline. We've got Bruno Lager, Patrick Vieira, plenty of people coming up. Um, Ten Hag, don't worry. Ten Hag will be discussed at length at some point. He will be there. All of that information will be with you on this channel. So if you want to get all that content, if you want to get all the info, make sure that you click that subscribe button and you continue to like the videos because that let me, lets me know, anyway, that you're liking this content. But let's get into today's show um, and talk to the people that are in here as well. Gary Hardy, thank you so much for tuning in. Joseph, Carl's Mount, um, Taib, Coop Dog. Um, what grade do I teach? Uh, secondary girls, so it's uh, it's tough. It's a tough one. Quest one says, "Hey, made it early for once. Uh, you're tuning in for the uh, for the live show. Thank you so much, everyone that's tuning in today. Uh, we're going to get to some of your comments uh, in just a second, um, but let's start off uh, and kick off with what I want to talk about first, which is this Hector Bellerin. Um, looking like he could leave Arsenal if you are to believe the reports that are going out recently. Please let me know in the chat box what your thoughts are." on these stories, just speculation, or maybe is there some truth? But let's talk about um, his agent's comments. We love agent's comments during the international break. It's what happens in the international break is that we get agent's comments all the time. Um, so he says, at the moment, he's focused on his team's commitments. Uh, he comes from a bad injury and is returning to his usual level. He likes Italy there. Uh, there's already been interest from an Italian club, but I can't reveal who it is. Hmm. <laughs> he has a long contract and it won't be easy to take him away from Arsenal. He's their vice captain. We'll see how it goes. It's this bit here. It's the but I can't reveal it section that uh, I kind of want to focus on because, mm, yes, I mean, Gary Hardy in the chat, there is the perfect uh, response to this. Uh, looking for a new deal. <laughs> because we know that what agents like to do is when they get sort of a, a vibe that may be coming towards the end of the deal, maybe we'll want to get uh, a little bit more money. Let's try and get some interest in my player. Let's try and make up some interest in my player. Let's not get ourselves in too much trouble. Let's not say that any specific clubs are involved. Let's not name them. And let's just say that, oh, hey, um, someone's involved in uh, Bellerin, so you might want to sort of sign him up for a new deal. And I think that's effectively what is going on with this situation. Could I see him leaving in the future? I wouldn't say it's impossible. I don't think it's impossible whatsoever to think that Hector Bellerin could one day not be at Arsenal. We've seen it with plenty of uh, plenty of players that have left the club. Koscielny was was a big one for me. I, I thought he would just remain here. Um, but he was very, very adamant that he wanted to leave. And if someone like Koscielny can act that way, there's no reason to say that another player couldn't. I don't personally think that Bellerin is anywhere near the sort of personality levels that Koscielny was in that scenario. Um, but he's just I, I'm sure that he's just signed a relatively new deal. Um, the injury was huge. I think you know, the, the rehabilitation process from the club, the patience from the club definitely would bode in their favour. On, on a scale of 1 to 10, how worried I am of Be Bellerin leaving? Probably about a 3, maybe a 4. I'm not that I'm not that worried. I'm really, really not. Let's get some of your co uh, comments in the chat box about Bellerin and see what you think. Um, Abiodun says, the Spanish weather and pace was just about right for Santi. Oh, Santi. We're going to talk about Santi a little bit. Don't you worry. Um, Carl Helberg says, don't believe anything, though. Agents' jobs are to get better deals for their clients. Yes, 100%, mate. Uh, Chris Carl 7 says, he's already in a new contract, isn't he? You can never get enough money, Chris. It's football, mate. <laughs> That's how it works these days. 
Um, Tayyip says, Arsenal need to rebuild yet again. Ben says, if they don't want to be at the club, sell them. Uh, Glenn Cook says, agents hard at work trying to get their clients extra money. Um, Ray says, hi, Tom. Nice mic, but can you not? Co- can you cover the light? Can I cover the light? Can I cover that one? Or that one? Or that one? I don't know what you're talking about, mate. Can I cover the light? Or oh, this light? This one here, is that really annoying? I can turn it around if you prefer. Hold on. Here we go. Is that is that better for you, Ray? I hope that's better for you. <laughs> um, Philip Cruzden says, Tom, uh, have you noticed how much uh, pa- how much paste? Paste. I didn't know Hector Miller had made any paste. That's interesting. That how does he make paste? Like um, like hummus. Um, I know you mean pace. Um, <laughs> has Hector lost since coming back from injury? I think that's just caution. I genuinely think that's just caution. If you've had two consecutive, extremely difficult injuries to come back from, you're going to be a little bit nervous. And I think with time, he will grow in confidence week on week and uh, he will improve. I don't think that it's anything to worry about too much right now. Um Sorry, I spoke, wrote that last text, says Philip. No problem, Philip. Don't you worry about it. Um, Coop Dog says he seems like he bleeds Arsenal. I can't see him leaving. Uh, Tabiso says, Tom, what do you think of Torreira swap deal for AC Milan's Frank Kesse? I, I think that we can keep Torreira. <laughs> I genuinely don't think any, they'd see any reason why we should be getting rid of Torreira under a different manager. I think that Torreira would be a much, much, much better player. Beast Titan says he is on a new contract. So it can't be money issues considering they won't sack Emery for six million. I, I genuinely think that always, always agents, whether the player is interested in a new deal or wants more money or doesn't, the agent is always going to try and sort of shimmy their way into getting their player the best possible deal that they could. And that comes down to plenty of things. If you think about it, agents get fees every time deals are struck. So if they can sort out a new system or a new contract for their client, that means money for them. And if it's money for them, they're doing their job, they're getting more money. So this really, really doesn't concern me right now whatsoever. Uh, 95 Winston adds to my point uh, to Philip saying he will take time to regain his pace. He will. But don't worry, it will come back. I don't think Ellering's pace is anything to worry about right now. You really, really don't need to be too concerned about that. Let's move on to our second story uh, of the show, which is talking about a certain Mr. Henrik Mkhitaryan um, and his escapades, should we say, if my internet speed decides to work that little bit quicker so you guys can actually see everything I want to show you. I don't I don't care about cookies. What are even are cookies? Enable all... What is this? Save and take me to goal. Please, please take me to goal. That's what I'm here for. Um, I'm on the goal website, as you could tell, being a right pain in the backside. Um, Mkhitaryan. So... Here we go. A little bit of shots being fired here. Um, He paid more attention to tactics, so my role changed, is what he was saying about Emery. I was starting as a winger, but I had to play and build with the defensive midfielder. It's why I couldn't contribute many goals or assists. I like to play more freely and move wherever there's space, but you have to do the job that the manager asks. Now, this is a weird one because... When you hear in international breaks about players coming out and saying things about their team and and stuff like that, I just I don't really understand ever a player's sort of motivation to, to say this sort of stuff. I, I get that they want to get something off their chest. I understand that they want to do something to sort of maybe get a reaction in the future. But Mkhitaryan is with Roma. He's away with them. He's been asked a question. You don't have to be that sordid about it. I understand that people get really frustrated with Unai Emery. And trust me, I am one of those people. Week on week, I criticize Unai Emery's tactics, the way he plays. And whilst this is going to be another stick to beat the Spaniard with, this Mkhitaryan still under contract at Arsenal. And he's going out there to Roma. And it's not like you're no longer employed by that club. You're very much employed by your club still. And yet... He feels the need to go out there and sort of slam the manager. So maybe you would have thought I would have gone down the route of sort of criticising Emery because of this. But I take it from a different perspective. I don't really like seeing this from a player coming out and just saying a load of things that doesn't really matter. Yes, people are going to grab onto this. Yes, people are going to turn around and say, oh, it's just more proof that... um, 
it's just more proof that Emery needs to sort of do more tactically or Emery's tactics are costing us. And I agree that they are. Don't get me wrong. I think they are costing us completely. The difference is, is that I just don't like an employee of the club being a player coming out and just slamming things and making things worse. The vitriolic atmosphere around Arsenal is already bad enough without this being a big, big thing. Let's get some of your comments. Um, Sonny, who, uh, thank you for inviting me on. I'll be on Sonny's channel on Monday. Please do go check him out. He says, I never thought I would say it, but Mickey does more in a game than Pepe. Oh, that's controversial, fella. <laughs> I think we have a big discussion about that on Monday. In terms of actual like commitment to the game, I mean, Pepe, it's just the tactics. It's, it is purely down to the system. He's not getting the most out of his wingers, his wide positions. I don't think you can make too many judgments about players in detail because of their being so restricted and so harnessed or what's not harness, what's the word I want? Shackled, that's the word I want. Shackled by this manager system that we can't get as much influence and extrovertedness from these players. Um, Beast Titan says, God, this proves Emery is atrocious. Mickey needed to get it off his chest. We were uh, we were slagging him off last season for his performances. I mean, he didn't say that. Um, <laughs> this means Emery will get the sack. Um, no, I don't... I get it. I re I'm really trying to come at this from a different angle because, you know, week on week, I come out here and I say that Emery is wrong for this. Emery needs to go. He's criticising for this. I'm just trying to take this different sort of angle with this one. I just don't like a player that's already employed, even though he's at another club on loan. Come out. If you want to leave, if you want to go and you want to be sold by the club, that's fair enough. If you no longer are employed, go out. But if I'm at my job and I start publicly slating my job, that's what is that? It's, you, it's not professional. It's not how things should be done. And it creates a bad example for other players, other youngsters looking up at players. I just don't like it. I, call me wrong. Say what you like about it. And you can have your opinion as I'm having mine. But I just don't like it. I just don't like how those players are just having a go at the manager in that way when they're off and they're protected by the, the English Channel and a few hundred miles of land. I just don't like it. I just, it's just my opinion. Um, Dave Atkinson says, so it's okay for you, but not a player. Good question. You're right to call me out on that, Dave. You are right. I'm not employed by the club um, is, is the best answer I can come up for you. It's okay for me to criticise because... I'm not employed by them. Um, that sounds really sarcastic. I don't mean to come across really sarcastic. Um, trust me, my students call me sarcastic all the time. I probably am in some ways. Um, I just think that as a fan, I have a right to, to, to criticise and to pinpoint areas which I think need improving. If you're employed, it's a different kettle of fish. It just is. And it's like the Xhaka scenario. I have a lot of sympathy for Granite Xhaka because of the abuse that he's got. But I will criticise the way that he reacted to fans because whilst he was directing that abuse, or abuse, it is abuse, those swear words and, and those signals at fans, it was done directed at the fans are giving him abuse. But you can't act that way as an employee, as a captain. And you can't turn around and say that Granite Xhaka should have the captaincy stripped. Granite Xhaka is a disgrace. He should not be acting in that way. And then turn around and say, well, Mkhitaryan, he's, he can say what he likes. It's, you can't have it both ways, if you know what I mean. It's, it doesn't work. And I think that's just the way that you need to you need to do. As Nicky Wilson says, that you're paid to play and represent the club. And I don't know what Mkhitaryan's wage breakdown is at Roma, but I can probably assume, based on Italian wage structures, especially at clubs like Roma that aren't blessed massively with finances, that Arsenal will probably be subsidising a little bit of those wages. I don't know that for sure. I'm just making an assumption. But even in the case that even if they weren't subsidising some of those wages, you are still employed by Arsenal. You're just on loan. You're going to return. And if you're going to return, imagine how awkward that's going to be. In the chat, please let me know. I'm not entirely sure how many years left are on Mkhitaryan's contract. I know it's one or two. I believe it might be t this one and then one more year. I might be wrong, though. Uh, hopefully it is one more year because obviously if we can sell him for some money, that'd be really, really good. Um... Chris K7 says that he's a flop in the Premier League compared to the Bundesliga. Yeah, he was. But it's just, I just never thought that he suited what we wanted, really. I thought there were all the talent in the world was there for Mkhitaryan. He's one of the few players to get over 20 goals and 20 assists, I believe it was, in the same season at Dortmund, which is an unbelievable achievement. But he just wasn't able to sort of transition that into the Premier League. And that's a huge shame. Um, but he's off at Roma. I just think, in my opinion, 
he shouldn't really be doing that. Uh, Olo says, uh, I don't think his comments are that bad. He is not necessarily saying the tactics are bad, just that he did not like it when he was asked to. And that's fair enough. I don't think it's hugely slating. Um, my point of view on this is I just don't think it's necessary at all. Um, if you want to come out and have a comment about your t- your struggles, you can just come out and say that I really struggle with things how they were and then immediately move on to say that at Roma, I'm having a really, really great time. I'm being a little more free. I'm allowed to do, um, I'm allowed to play sort of with more freedom. That's fine. But if you want to come out and be specific about certain tactics, I think that maybe crosses a line. Um, let's move on to the final story which is the nice one (laughs) which is the nice story i hope once again my I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Well, one minute I was on the screen and one minute I wasn't. This makes no sense. Why have I not got this? This is so weird. I can only apologize. That was so strange. I don't care why it's all of a sudden I had been chucked off of this. My Chrome just went and died, um, which means I don't actually have the article on the screen now, which is really annoying. Um, but we can still talk about the story. Really sorry about that. The um, Santi Cazorla basically has come out and said that he would like to return to Arsenal, not in the sense of a... Uh, sort of a player position, um, but actually more in the sense that he wants to return to the club in sort of a director or uh, he's even said coach. He mentioned a coach. And that's great. I think that bringing someone back like Santi Cazorla coming back into the team is going to be really, really positive for the club. I think if you bring someone back like that who's got a connection with the fans, the fans loved him, he never really got to say the goodbye that he wanted. If you've got that in your locker and you've got that ability to really galvanise a squad, get that sort of attacking verve and passing play, and you've got that information to sort of divulge that onto a group of players that really sort of need some inspiration, then I think there's nothing wrong with Santi Cazorla possibly coming back into the fray in some sense. Not as a player. We know that. He's getting on now. And to be fair to him, if you've been watching La Liga, which long-time listeners of the show will know, I absolutely adore La Liga, Um, even though this year it's been a bit of a a struggle to watch how poor Real Madrid and Barcelona have been, and Atletico, to be fair to them. Um, They've been quite poor this year, but Sani Cazorla has absolutely ripped it up since being back in the Spanish League. And it's an absolute pleasure to watch this little magician work his stuff. And I'm absolutely over the moon for the guy that it's worked out because he had such a torrid time of injuries. It was absolutely horrific. So the fact that he has now moved on and got over this is fantastic. I mean, Gary Hardy in the chat said he's playing really, really well. Um, uh, back onto the, the Mkhitaryan stuff. I am seeing your comments, don't you worry. Um, but it's... It's just really great to see Santi Cazorla doing good once again. Um, Dave Atkinson says, please come back to this great club. We love you, Santi. Yes. Uh, George says, imagine if we still had Santi and Ramsey still in the squad. We never should have let them go. Um, Ben says, Santi would be our best player right now. Uh, Corey says, Santi and Arteta in, Emery out. Um, Beast Titan says, I would sell Alba and Lacazette and go for Haaland. Play Martinelli up front and strengthen the midfield. Wow, that is brave, fella. Um, Toby says, very Arsenal like to let Santi go and then miraculously his career is resurrected from the dead and he's injury free. <laughs> it is, mate, isn't it? It's really, really frustrating. Um, Toby says, Ramsey was playing well under Emery, then got sold to Juve. Um, oh, he didn't get sold. He just left in the he left on the Bosman. Um, um, I just. <laughs> The thing about Arsenal and letting players go, you can't, you can never, ever, ever predict what is going to happen. You can never, ever predict if a player is going to get better or get worse when they leave a club. Even when players join, you look at someone like Pepe, he's coming to this team. Yes, he's shackled by the system that we play, but at the end of the day, he's just not been able to 
to play in this system. He's just not delivered on the same level that he was for Lille. If you look at Mkhitaryan that we were just talking about, had an absolute stellar season for Dortmund in his final year in Germany. Went to Manchester United and it just couldn't be reciprocated. Even in the same league, Alexis Sanchez, absolute, well, you can't call him a legend anymore, but he could have been a legend at the club if he'd have stayed. But he played so well, he really, really galvanised his team, dragged us forward, dragged us to victories, went to Manchester United, played a few keys on the piano, and just hasn't cut it. And that will happen. And you just can't predict those sort of things. Let's carry on with some of these comments. Sonny says, if Alba wants to leave, if we are not getting Champions League football, would you cash in now? Good question, Sonny. Um, would I cash in if he wants to leave? Then yes, I would, because I don't really want particularly want someone that doesn't want to be at the club. Um, no matter who they are, no player is bigger than this club. And if they want to leave, let's cash in. I know that Real Madrid have always had that sort of interest in the Gabonese and he's always really had his interest in Real Madrid. So I don't see why you could cash in for 40 million, go out. I mean, the amount of people that suggest Haaland. This is, <laughs> you know me, you watched me from the uh, Marco Rosa video and you saw me in my RB um, Salzburg, RB, like RB Leipzig, Red Bull Salzburg shirt. I love that, I love the club, but I follow that club intensely and I have a real, real um, liking of them because of the youth production and because of how successful they are. And I, I love watching the growth of that team and the players because the way they do it, I'm so envious as an Arsenal fan and an Arsenal lifelong passion-filled guy that loves Arsenal to the absolute core that I can watch a team like Red Bull Salzburg, watch what they create in the likes of Haaland and just know that we aren't going to get it. And I know and I hate that we've watched Liverpool go and get Sadio Mane from Re from Southampton after he left Red Bull Salzburg. They've gone and got Naby Keita from RB Leipzig after he left Red Bull Salzburg. And I'm fingers crossed that we go out and we get Deo Upamecano from RB Leipzig, who left there from Red Bull Salzburg. But we just don't. But the thing is, what I don't like is that when someone gets quite good, like Haaland is right now, is that everyone all of a sudden jumps on this thing of, we must sign Haaland now. No. I mean, yeah, I'd love it if we signed him, of course. But for Haaland, thinking about the player, he doesn't need to leave. He does not need to, need to leave Red Bull Salzburg right now. Stay there for another year. Get better in a team where you know you're going to play and be the main guy. Then leave for a hell of a lot more money. Get paid a lot more money and ultimately go on to bigger and better things. But it's just how it goes with when we were looking to, if we are ever going to offload Aubameyang because he wants Champions League football, who comes in? It's very, very hard to find strikers at the moment that are affordable, that would sort of work in the system that we're playing. And we, at the end of the day, we don't know at the end of this year whether or not Unai Emery is going to be here. If he's not, then it really depends on the manager that you bring in. And if it's someone like Marco Rosa that plays a very pressing style, you need a striker of that ilk. If you're going to bring in someone else that plays a more counter-attacking style or a more protagonistic style or a more industrial style like a Simeone, then you need another different striker. So it's not as simple as just saying, go get him, go get him, go get him. It's not. It doesn't work because you have to get someone in that fits the system. And that's why I'm so critical of Emery because he doesn't bring in the players that fit the system that he wants to play. And, and it's really, really frustrating to see that week in, week out. Um, we're going to wrap up in a second. Just get some more of your comments before we do so. Uh, George says, if Emery does stay until the end of the season, what business should we do in the transfer market in January? Uh, I think that we need to go out and sign that centre-back and that defensive midfielder that we need desperately. Um, Upper McCann, I've already mentioned, would be my pick, but there's a couple of players at Rabi Leipzig that you'd go for. Um, Canate as well is fantastic. You can go into the Spanish league. I would have got Hermoso in the summer before he left Espanyol for Atletico Madrid, but he went and I would have got him personally, but that's just my choice. But we need that, we need that centre-back. And I pray it happens. I really, really do. I just don't see it happening. I saw a, a weird article. Or was it an article? It might have been a tweet. Someone put a tweet out, one of those ITK losers. Um, saying that Arsenal are going to spend big in January and that we basically give given Unai Emery all of the resources that we could possibly muster this season to sort of change things and dra drag us back into the top four race. I just don't think that they're going to change. You could sign... You could sign up a Meccano. You could sign Eric Haaland. You could sign some of the best midfielders. I just don't think it matters because at the end of the day, if your system doesn't emphasize the quality of those players, you're never going to really, really succeed. And that's a huge, huge problem. 
And it's a huge, huge shame that that's happening. Um, thank you ever so much for tuning in, everyone. I really, really appreciate you doing so uh, on this really rainy, horrible um, Friday evening. Enjoy the rest of the evening. As I said at the start of the video, I'm really, really sorry you've not had any content the last couple of days. Things have been absolutely manic at work trying to get stuff done. But podcast on Sunday will be out. Um, I'm looking at getting, uh, obviously, our debutant is coming on, which you'll be revealed to in the process. Um, and also, I believe Webby is coming on, and I'm going to get one other guest on as well. So that will be around for Sunday. So make sure you tune in for that. If you're really enjoying our managerial tactical breakdown series, we've done Marco Rose and Luis Enrique so far. There are others in the pipeline. Eric Ten Hag will be talked about. Um, Bruno Lago from Benfica. Um, Patrick Vieira from Nice. Thierry Henry has just gone to Montreal Impact, so it's going to be really interesting to see how he gets on in the MLS. Obviously, I really, really quite like the MLS. I'm now going to go off and finish. Finish? Start. I've only played one game. A fuck champion so far. Um, so, yeah, that's my evening, pretty much. Chill, bit of FIFA. Um, chill with the other half for a bit and uh, enjoy my weekend without Arsenal, which is probably a nice relief for once. I really hope you enjoy your evening. Um, I can see some of your managerial suggestions in the chat. Don't worry. You can comment them in the comment box below and I'm going to talk about plenty. I'll see you again very, very soon. Please drop a like. Please subscribe if you're new. And uh, as always, up the Arsenal.